Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday, the third day of May 2023. I hope you're all safe and healthy on this hump day. As we begin our Wednesday, blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are out here saving lives, and those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets, sidewalks, parks, places clean and disease free, and those that make deliveries of many important things for our convenience, including food and water and mail. Blessings upon double blessings on the men and women trying to help rescue and deliver and recover the teenage and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also pornography, child pornography, prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on the profiteers of these things. And double curses on the perverts that create the demand of which the other perverts make the supply. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children. Homeless in the United States of America, mostly children, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So there was a basketball last night, basketball game last night, excuse me, at Madison Square Garden. The New York Knicks defeated the Miami Heat 111-105 in a game they had to have. Um... It was ugly most of the game, but listen, in the playoffs, the object is just to win. You don't care how they do it, just get it done. It's like Al Davis of the Raiders used to say, just win, baby. That's all it is right here, and that's what they did last night. Now, um, the Heat were without Jimmy Butler, okay, and so the Knicks ended up out-rebounding them 50-34. to The refs tried their best to take both Mitchell Robinson and Hartenstein out of the game with some stupid calls, but I have to say, overall, these two refs that were reffing last night, these guys were much better than Tony Brothers and, and whoever that Ford guy was, who apparently was in the was in New Secaucus, New Jersey, as part of the review team. Anyway, um, but in spite of that, matter of fact, I want to give the game ball to Isaiah Hartenstein. He only had three points, and he had nine important rebounds and four offensive. But the big thing was the hustle, getting the loose balls, diving on the floor, boxing out, playing tough. Um, most of the night, to me, it appeared Miami was tougher and more more um, veteran edge on them for the playoffs than the Knicks were. The Knicks were like the first timers in the playoffs. They were acting like they didn't know. And for the most part, you know, for most of the young people in on the Knicks, our youngins, they, they are really, even though some of them were there two years ago, they really didn't participate like they're participating now in the playoffs. So it was very... Uh, much it's a very much a learning experience, which again is why I said the fact that the Knicks are the fifth seed and 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 played in the first round. This is a very successful season, but they won in the first round against Cleveland, and here we are tied one all in the semifinals of the Eastern Conference. So this is really tremendous. But now that we're here, they could get this thing done. Julius Randle played last night, twenty five points, twelve boards. I mean, eight assists, the, and that's typical Julius. He was back to his normal self, including the bonehead play at the end. Where all he had to do was take the ball out, and he steps in, and we lose it. You know, we're up six. We're up three, three, three possessions, and he, yeah. Anyway, there was that. So, but overall, he's back to being Julius. He just had a typical Julius night, and that's what the Knicks needed. Um, Mitchell Robinson, again, he was in foul trouble most of the night. He ended up playing 21 minutes. He only had five boards, but it was very difficult for him. Uh, the Heat made it difficult for him. To, you know, listen, I got to give Eric Spoelstra all the credit in the world. I mean, the, here's the Miami Heat. I mean, they were, you know, below 60. I think they were, they came in as a seven seed. But, uh, man, they really are um, playing Tough basketball. Spolstra always has them tough. And let me explain something to you. There's some people that are out here ready to say how Tom Thibodeau got out coached, but wasn't giving Tom Thibodeau credit for out coaching BJ Bick, uh, Bickerstaff. Okay? It's the hate that's crazy, you know, out here, especially people that claim to be Knicks fans. But the thing is, is that continuity is extremely important with your program. As I constantly say, Spolstra has been on the sideline for the Miami Heat like 15 years. I am sure there are many people that were calling for his firing over the time. Okay, I remember when LeBron and Bosch and Wade first came, people were saying he should be fired and that he didn't get along with LeBron. 
But Pat Riley stuck to the program, stuck to the culture. And the continuity now is that when you come to the Miami Heat, you are expected to play defense. You are expected to understand that end of the floor. Okay, You're expected to be tough. It's part of the culture. And I believe Tom Thibodeau is developing the same thing in New York. The problem is the fans who are constantly calling for him to be fired, constantly looking over the, over the other side as if the grass is greener, constantly trying to find something else to start all over again. But I love the toughness of the heat. I love the way their culture is. And that's what we're trying to build in New York. And I'm glad that Don and James Dolan don't listen to any of y'all because they just staying with the program and they're building it the right way. Last night, Miami Heat was showing a tremendous amount of toughness. It wasn't how much they were shooting or what kind of uh, stats they were putting up. There's just a general edge and toughness to that team that they just feel like we're going to beat you up and win this basketball game, and especially in the playoffs, which is why they've had the success they've had. Um, this is not going to be easy. I don't care who's playing and who's not playing. They're not going to blow us out when they get Jimmy Butler, and we're not going to blow them out when Jimmy Butler's not here because, like I said, it's a tough squad. They got long-term sustainable winning culture. They know what they want to do. Um, and so, yes, it, it was a really tough game. The Knicks, uh, Brunson, I really got to give props to Brunson because early in the game, he wasn't getting his shots. He wasn't quite forcing it, right? The last night, he had one turnover. And at the end of the game, he took over especially in the fourth quarter when the Knicks needed him most. He drops 30, 10 of 19 from the field. R.J. Barrett, at this stage of his career, is learning to be a playoff player, period. Just play in the playoff, be consistent. And he's been very consistent in this series and at the end of the Cleveland series. Here he was again, 8 of 17 from the field, 5 three-pointers, 5 of 9 from 3, 3 of 5 from the foul line, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, he had three turnovers, but you expect that from 20. He, he did the first two turnovers, actually. It was a 22-kid-year-old style turnover, but he'll learn. He ended up with 24. Then, of course, you had Josh Hart, who had a, almost a triple-double. 11 boys, 9 assists, 14 points. Wouldn't shoot the ball. It was driving me crazy because a lot of open shots, he was just sitting there looking around. Not, but I understand, he, he's, again, this is Madison Square Garden. Y'all don't know what it's like to deal with y'all. And so this is the biggest thing. And Josh, Josh Hart is being bold. He's being decisive. And when it needed it, homie hoisted up a couple of threes at the end that we needed. Knocked them down. Big time shots. Big time moments. I love that we got this kid. Um, Grimes played 26 minutes. And I was glad at the end of the game. We can't get Deuce in there. Okay. But you had Grimes and Hart in there playing defense. That's, to me, one of the keys to this win. They shut Miami down at the end. Grimes was a big part of that. No, he didn't shoot the ball well yet, but he'll get there. I'm not worried about him shooting the basketball. He's going to end up doing that. But the defense was there. It was on point. He he created. He had three big rebounds in that fourth quarter. Very, very good. And then, of course, we had Isaiah Hartstein. I mentioned Obi Toppin. You know, he, he he did not have a good game yesterday. He did not have a good game overall. He was minus eight, and it kind of showed. So he was just all out of sync. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. It, I surmise it was now he's back to the bench role after starting. It's a different role. See, and, and I think he was just getting back acclimated. But he was he was minus eight. He didn't have a great game. Quickly didn't have a great game. You know, he, he's not been shooting the ball well. But again, this is, again, some of y'all, I heard one guy was like, I gave up on quickly. And another guy's like, they just can't shoot. We need real shooters. Stop it. Stop being short-sighted as the default. It's like, you know, some people, the first reaction is the trip. You know, it, 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 some people do that. Some In New York Knicks Nation, the first reaction is to be short-sighted. It's like default. Short-sighted. All of these guys are young. They'll learn how to play. In big moments. They've already shown flashes of it. Okay. There's going to come a time when they're going to be deadly. It may even be this playoff. But in, in Miami is a great training ground for them in this scenario. You're not going to get many teams as tough as the Miami Heat. I mean, they may get more talented teams. But toughness, you're dealing with the tough ones right here. So this is good for the youngins on the Knicks. I'm not worried about Grimes. I'm not worried about Crickly. I'm not worried about Topper. They're going to be fine. 
We need to just stick with the program, continue the continuity. So now we go back to Miami with a split. We knew that that was what every team that's not the home team that don't have home court advantage in the playoffs wants a split in the first two games. That's all they're looking for. They got it. Just like us with Cleveland. Now we're looking to get a split in Miami. That's what we're looking to do. Can we get a split in Miami? That's what we're looking to do here. Um, so the next game is on the spot on Shabbat at, at 6, uh, 3.30. I'll probably watch the game later on the replay, but um, we're looking to get a split. And I honestly believe we have a strong chance not only to get the split, but to actually maybe beat them twice. And the reason I say that is because the Knicks are actually better on the road than they are in Madison Square Garden. And the reason I feel, one of the big reasons they're better on the road is Julius Randle. Julius Randle seems to play better on the road than he plays at Madison Square Garden, with some exceptions. But generally speaking, he's better on the road. And so um, I would not mind you know, us going down there and getting two, but we really just want to get a split. That's what we're trying to get in Miami. Um, I, I, I really believe we could do that. that that's something that could get done. This is going to be a tough, grinded out series. Every game is going to be a war. I still pick the Knicks in six. I do not think uh, Miami is better than the Knicks. I think that Miami is tougher than the Knicks. They're just a tougher, uh, rugged team. Okay, they got some really grizzled veterans that's tough, like Kevin Love, like like uh, um, uh, Kyle Lowry, and then they got guys that just you know they 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 grounded, they was grinding to get in the league, and they here like Vincent and Struess. So and, and Caleb Martin, these some tough dudes, and so we, they're gonna beat it. The Knicks need to be ready for that, and I believe these first two games are showing them that, especially. Jalen Brunson. I knew his IQ was too high to not think about what happened in the first game and make adjustments. And he did. He really did. He came through at the end of the game. He picked his spots. He had, you know, he, he didn't have a lot of assists, two assists, uh, two steals, but really was the low turnovers. Last night, the Knicks ended up with 10 turnovers. Miami only had six. Now, that's ultra low. That's ultra low. Miami only had six turnovers. The Knicks had 10, which is still low. Um, the, the Knicks shot the ball 70% from the line. Miami shot 71% from the line. Miami shot 45% from the field. The Knicks shot 45% from the field. The key thing here, again, was the two factors we talked about, the rebounding and the turnover. The Knicks only had 10, still low, and then he had, they out-rebounded them 50-34 to 34, uh, on the offensive glass. It was 11-8. to 8. There's your ball game right there. Um, both teams, uh, the Miami Heat went to the line 17 times. The Knicks went to the line 30 times. So the Knicks did go to the line a lot more. But listen, there was a lot of blown calls. The Knicks were being aggressive. I like it. You know, I like it. So that's how it goes. That's the ball game. 1-11-105. They go back to Miami for next weekend. Um, this is a really good series. It's going to be a good series. Remember now. The Knicks win this series, and they're in the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, now think about that. In September, was anybody on any of these platforms talk about ECF for the Knicks? I wasn't, and I was telling you 45 wins. I was thinking if they get 45 wins and they can get in the first round and they finish in the top six, it's a successful season for year three. That's where we're at now, year three. But they did better, got 47 wins, got the fifth seed, and won the first round. I still wasn't thinking ECF. So here we are in the position to be able to get into the ECF by beating this tough Miami team. I'm very proud of our New York Knicks, very proud of the job Tom Thibodeau and his staff has done. Very proud of the front office for adding, just adding, not making any crazy trades, but adding Josh Hart, even if it costs us a first-round pick. Costing us a first round pick gets us into the second round because look how Josh Hart is playing. So this is a good thing. Um, I'm very proud of our team. Very proud of them from top to bottom. Everybody's on point. They're doing their job. They're growing. They're learning. Um, and like I said, this same team, if brought back next year, is a 50 win team. These playoffs, even just if they don't get past the second round, these playoffs are going to show all of the youngin. You know what is what it's about. 
Okay, how, what you got to do during the season. They've learned that. But now in the playoffs, they're a 51 team. Same team, 51 team next year. So uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing, even though, you know, they, they you know, they, they had a tough time last night. But listen, they pulled out the W. So on to Miami. And in Miami, my understanding is that, you know, I'm, I haven't been to Miami since I was a little boy, but I heard. From what I observed on TV, there's just as many Nick fans as there are Heat fans. And not only that, it's like it's going to be like it was in Orlando. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be crazy in Miami. So buckle up, y'all. It's going to go. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, y'all enjoy your Wednesday. Be safe out there. Shalom.